The Rana Connectivity Forum 2019 is the fifth connectivity forum organized by Cooperation and Development Institute together with its partners. This year, the key themes were multidimensional connectivity and its contribution to the reforms of Western Balkan countries on their way towards EU membership. We at FES are strong supporters of the European perspective of the Western Balkan countries and the Berlin pr uh, process is a very important, um, important measure on the way to become at some point full member of the European Union. So we support the Berlin process but we also support regional integration and especially uh, the connectivity within the region. So this forum is extremely important to take stock see what the challenges are, um, but also what the opportunities are and the ideas that can be realized. And we're very happy that we can support this space to discuss all these issues and see what really building a community means in practical terms. From the very beginning of uh, Tirana Connectivity Forum, uh, we were supporting and uh, promoting this forum uh, because uh, we appreciate the work of CDI of analyzing and evaluating uh, the Berlin process. But uh, we want to not only remain to this, that means analyzing and uh, evaluation, uh, we want uh, to give some vivid uh, contribution, some concrete contribution to the Berlin process, to fill uh, this Berlin process uh, with spirit and life. Uh, and what better uh, than uh, some uh, joint uh, project uh, which we have since several years uh, with CDI, uh, namely uh, the contribution uh, to promote uh, some structurized cooperation uh, between youth organizations in the Western Balkans. If we look at the Tirana Connectivity Forum here in Tirana, it's the prime example of, of you know, bringing people together to discuss connectivity issues, which is very important for us. It's, it's very important for us to bring together people to discuss these issues and to get them together to yeah, discuss issues of regional cooperation, particularly amongst young people. Well, I think connectivity is a mechanism for convergence because it brings people, it brings firms, it brings ideas across borders. And we know from empirical analysis that ideas are fundamental for economic growth. The transfer of people getting together allows them to talk and communicate. It gives them ideas about new business opportunities and the like. We know fundamentally Economic growth is determined by the knowledge in a country, and that enhances long-term growth. Well, I think the strategy will give the opportunity for countries to provide those forum and those platforms for people to move for foreign direct investment, which allows a lot of knowledge transfers uh, via learning by doing. It's by through the process of actually getting in the game that you can actually understand how to do it. What else could be important for Western Balkans? So if we are not uh, united, Western Balkans are such a small market in regard with uh, other markets in the world. So all in all, we are less than 20 million uh, people, which means that you need a lot of efforts and energy and definitely you have to be smart, well connected with each other, uh, based on, uh, on the saying and the principle that united we stand, but divided we fall and uh, definitely connect uh, people, not only infrastructure, not only roads, and not only the digital. Uh, that's uh, why important. We can't really go ahead and move forward if we are not connected and interconnected with each other. 
I think it's very important to connect everything that is being done on connectivity in the Western Balkans with the larger EU connectivity strategy. The Western Balkans territory is an enclave, if you wish, within the EU territory. Therefore, everything that is linked to the connectivity issues in the, in the Western Balkans, by definition, is uh, connectivity within the EU countries as well. Uh, I think it's a very good event. I think it's very important that we talk about all the challenges, but even more about all the opportunities that are before us. Um, I think there is a lot of focus on the Western Balkans and I think also there is a lot of understanding that without proper infrastructure there is no possibility for real economic growth at a scale that is needed. Therefore, uh, this should be used uh, as um, as an idea on how we move on with really benefiting the people of the Balkans through different infrastructure projects. And I'm not thinking only about railways and highways, I'm also thinking about digital economy, extremely important, about human resources, about everything that benefits societies here. Yes, of course, it has to be, because it's, there are two reasons. The first is, it's good for the region. If you are better connected with people-to-people -people contact, with transport, with energy, it's also important for the whole region as one market. It's more attractive for investment, for example. And secondly, you prove this way that you can deal with your neighbors, that you have the capacity to have common projects and this is what you need as a member of European Union as well. Increasing connectivity and moving closer to the EU are things that go hand in hand. Um, we know that improving infrastructure um, brings countries closer to achieving the SDGs and Agenda 2030. It increases trade ties and makes countries more attractive to investment. And increasing people-to-people -people connections um, has the power to contribute to peace building and conflict resolution. So as the Balkan region becomes more interconnected and increases its connectivity, it's actually already on its way um, to the EU. It's a pleasure to be uh, for the second time in the Tirana Connectivity Forum. Uh, the connectivity is inscribed in the European DNA. Europe connects people and by connecting people, goods and services uh, uh, help the progress of their own state. So how this uh, uh, feature in enlargement? Uh, enlargement is a transformation agenda. Connectivity is a transformation agenda. By moving forward the connectivity agenda in the Western Balkans and here in Albania, you move forward towards in the EU integration process. And therefore, it's very important to continue the process of reform, including the connectivity agenda. Uh, what I expect from uh, uh, this year forum, to continue to raise awareness as it has happened so far, about the, the crucial role of connectivity and in particular I welcome the focus this year on the role of youth. Uh, the more youth become central in the role, in, in the work of this forum, the more connectivity move forward because exactly the transformative role of connectivity. People, young people will make this country more sustainable and more peaceful in the future the more they are connected. The only instrument we have to convince our EU friends to open up session negotiations is if we deliver on our reform commitments. This is what we have done so far, as you said. This is what we con will continue to do with very strong determination. It's not something that we do to convince our EU friends to open accession negotiations. These are reforms we have undertaken in order to transform Albania. But it's not an easy process. The reforms are difficult, are challenging. And for these reforms to work, the support provided by a credible EU accession perspective is extremely important. Uh, Albania has delivered on the conditions set for the opening of accession negotiations. What we would like to see is a credible 
process of conditionality. Conditionality is becoming ever more demanding and we welcome this because it's about transforming our country. But uh, this demanding conditionality should be also credible. Well, since the decision of, uh, of uh, 18th of October, uh, I think everybody is trying to rediscover what's not working really well in the enlargement process. Uh, certain things uh, were known, the process is not necessarily perfect, and there are things that need to be uh, reframed uh, and re-engineered. That being said, I don't believe uh, Albania or North Macedonia should be uh, discouraged in any way. Uh, what I think is uh, it's a risky situation right now, uh, especially after the Brexit uh, uh, unfolding, uh, is probably that we are experiencing a time of reversibility, a legal and political reversibility uh, in the enlargement process. Uh, this puts certain questions about what the EU member state must do better, uh, but certainly uh, uh, are not discouraging the, the candidate member states in the sense that at least for Albania, we know that the EU uh, enlargement process is a transformative one. Uh, it has been demonstrated again and again uh, in the public administration reform, in the justice reform. So people that advocate alternatives to enlargement uh, as of uh, the past few weeks uh, should be uh, very careful into how uh, they define this alternative. The Rana Connectivity Forum was my first activity last year when I became a coordinator of the Polish uh, presidency in the Berlin process. And of course a very good introduction into the region and into the process. Um, Tirana Connectivity Forum gives a very good insight into the current problems of the region. And uh, today I'm realizing what has been achieved and what is left and which challenges uh, do we have uh, ahead of us. The connectivity is one of the key topics in the Berlin process and the Western Balkans summits. And I think it will still stay the same on both Zagreb summit in, in the first half of, uh, of 2020 and also the Berlin process summit, which is this year co-chaired between North Macedonia and Bulgaria. So connectivity uh, is still the top topic. It, it, we perceive it as one of the main important instruments for European integration, one of the main important instruments for the Balkan getting closer to each other, the Balkan countries, but also the region getting closer to the European Union. The Tirana Connectivity Forum is contributing very well to opening honest and substantial discussions for the connectivity, but also by the connectivity uh, at a larger scale to uh, to cooperation and to increase of the mobility and uh, interaction within the region and the region with the European Union. As you know, the Western Balkan process is not replacing the European Union process of negotiations and integration. Of course, it is meant to be supporting the Western Balkan six to cover the criteria, to go further and to make a progress closer to the European family. This is the main idea, and Bulgaria has on top of its agenda, as during the Bulgarian presidency, the Western Balkans integration, and we shall continue as a coherent partner to do this because we are convinced that the Western Balkans, they belong to the EU family, and they have to be integrated as soon as possible. The European Commission, it's a long-standing, old, uh, strong bureaucracy and I'm sure they will go on and stick to this uh, agenda and the day will come when, when everything fits together and uh, uh, for instance accession talks with Albania and Macedonia uh, will go on. So I'm pretty optimistic. For EAB, connectivity is key for economic growth and competitiveness uh, as the EU bank EIB has always um, financed in alignment with EU policy's priority, especially the connectivity agenda for uh, development of connectivity within uh, Western Balkans and with EU. Um, transport and mobility is uh, the pillar 
of our activity since our foundation. Connectivity is not just financing infrastructure, is also supporting and ensuring that highest technical standards are implemented for uh, project preparation and project operation, including construction and maintenance. We really need a legal certainty and this is very important for the companies, decision makers, strategic investments and so on to understand what they will be looking at after 5 or 10 or 20 years. These are large, uh, in large intensive um, uh, investments, therefore they need this certainty. The other thing is that the, the good cooperation, efficient and constructive cooperation brings large investments. Uh, and these large investments, investments in particular in infrastructure, they connect the markets. And when the markets are connected, that brings efficiency, optimizes the resources, the use of resources, and therefore um, increases the, the economic welfare for the consumers and producers as well. All these investments and cooperation really bring the know-how and then this know-how is used also in other spheres uh, and not necessarily only in energy or, or then infrastructure as well, so, so roads and transport and so on. Well indeed, first of all, thank you for recognizing our work and our role in the region as one of the now most important and most relevant actor when it comes to youth field. And it was not uh, such an easy task to, to achieve all this in two years. However, in uh, the, the period uh, from now on, uh, we have to invest much more in creating so-called enabling environment for young people. And this is where we're expecting the even more support from our governments, but we're also expecting support from the civil society, we're expecting support for uh, media, we're expect expecting support for the educational sector. Uh, this is about synergies, and RICO is actually about synergies, and it's very much about connectivity. The basic reason why the countries of Southeastern Europe which want to access the EU are not developing fast enough is that on the one hand they are dependent on the European Union, especially in trade and investment, and on the other hand they can't accumulate enough capital for growth, for building new roads, for infrastructure and so on. This situation cannot be resolved by the means of the countries themselves. They need to have the same conditions as EU member states from Central and Eastern Europe who are receiving means from the so-called structural and cohesion funds. Croatia is receiving in this EU budget 8 billion euro and this is the reason why Croatia has come out of stagnation, economic stagnation. So I've been proposing with my colleagues from other think tanks since a long time to create a facility to provide grants, to provide free capital to the countries of the region to develop faster. And this should be done through a European agency for reconstruction or another institution which will handle the investments and the funding. The European Parliament so far did many good things for the enlargement. So, but he should continue this uh, support for the enlargement but the difference should be in intensity of the, of the activities of the European Parliament. European Parliament now should speak more loudly, more dramatically, because the whole process of enlargement is in danger by this decision of the European Council. So European Parliament should appeal to the European Council to to convince the Council that it is necessary to go on with the enlargement, that it is in the interest of the European Union, and to do it in a very dramatic way. That's what the European Parliament should do now. The methodology um, remains very much to be articulated. Uh, the message of uh, the French President is that uh, something needs to be done uh, with the enlargement uh, strategy, the pre-membership uh, policy, uh, in order to make it more, um, to instill more efficacy in the way in which it prepares candidate states to become member states. Um, 
I think one key aspect to this is um, the increased socialization between representative of the member states and representative of, uh, of the candidate states at different levels and I think the, the French methodology will encompass this. Uh, member states will have a key role in improving these this con connections with, uh, with the candidate states. Uh, certainly the kind of forum uh, uh, in which we are today, the connectivity forum, uh, definitely contributes to uh, this socialization between uh, representative of uh, the candidate states at different levels from the highest political level to civil society level and representative of the member states and I'm very happy that I was able to take part in this, uh, in this forum this year. Well, it was a pleasure to participate in the Tirana Connectivity Forum. I think not only does it connect you know, people from all over Europe, pan-European in a way, to discuss major issues of how to get out of what is now a crisis about EU enlargement um, into a more you know, favorable water, uh, I think it has provided concrete ideas as to how to, over, to use this crisis as an opportunity uh, to deal with the genuine criticism which exists and to turn it into a positive agenda. I think this um, forum really has provided you know, the platform uh, for that next debate. Together with our partners and based on the proceedings of Tirana Connectivity Forum, we are currently working on a development-based EU membership model for the Western Balkan countries. Here, multidimensional connectivity, being it spatial, in markets, in value chains, people-to-people -people and institutional, becomes a systemic component. 